channel. If you're new here, welcome. Thanks for joining me today. Take a second and click that subscribe button if you haven't done so already because I'd love to have you come back. I post new videos every single week here where I talk all about budgeting and lifestyle stuff, so you're definitely going to want to stick around. Today's video is going to be all about my budget for the fourth week in the month of October. Paycheck number four, we are going to be wrapping up the month. Actually, taking a look at my uh, deluxe monthly planner here where I keep track of all of my transactions, I've uh, paid all the bills for October. So we're going to start paying the bills for the first week in November this week. Um, if you're not familiar with the way that I budget, I am a paycheck to paycheck budgeter. So I don't necessarily budget by month, I budget by paycheck. My husband gets paid every Tuesday, so my budgets tend to go from Tuesday to the following Monday. This paycheck my husband received on October 27th, so we're covering all of the bills and expenses from October 27th all the way through until, let's go ahead and flip to November, November 3rd. So technically all of those bills have been paid already. I'm just going to take advantage of that and get a little bit of ahead. So we're going to be focusing on these first few bills for the month of November. We're going to get those paid. We're going to take care of all of our expenses for the week, things like groceries. And um, let's just go ahead and get into it. So when I printed my pages, these are pages from the Budget by Paycheck workbook, which I own the printable version of that workbook. I printed them kind of wonky, so whereas I usually have a spread and the left side of the page is my Paycheck Bill Tracker and then immediately next to it is my um, Cash Envelope Breakdown, I just printed things a little wonky and punched things a little weird. So we're actually going to go back to back today. Hopefully it's not too confusing. It's not that big of a deal. I didn't see the point in printing out new pages. This is going to work just fine. So I've already gone ahead and written out my budget this week. It's a very basic, simple budget. Not a lot to it. You guys know if you've been watching me for a while, I struggle sometimes if I make my budgets too overcomplicated, if I try to hit too many goals all at once, it just becomes overwhelming. So I always keep things super simple. I work on paying the bills that are due that week. I save a little bit, I put a little bit towards debt, and it always works out just fine. So let's go ahead and get started with where money's going to go this week. Under this bills category, I have all of the expenses that I'm going to pay with my checking account. So these are things like bills that are due for the week, but they're also things like groceries, which I use a credit card or a debit card for to purchase my groceries because I do the Walmart pickup. I save a ton of money doing the Walmart pickup because I can go on the app. I can buy exactly what I need for the week. I don't have to worry about impulse purchases. I also can look for the lowest price on the app and compare things side by side really easily. So if you've never tried the Walmart grocery pickup, I highly recommend it. I do have a link in my description box where you can click that link and sign up and your first Walmart grocery pickup order of $50 or more, you can get $10 off. So that'll save you even more money. Um, I really love the Walmart grocery pickup. You don't pay anything extra for the service. They will go, they will pull all of your items, bag them up for you, bring them out to you, put them right into your car for no extra cost. It's a great money saving tip. Highly recommend it. So that's why I leave this kind of grocery category under bills. Instead of taking out cash for groceries, you guys know I do a lot of my spending in cash with cash envelopes, but when it comes to groceries, it just makes sense. Use the Walmart grocery pickup. I save money. It's like a win-win. I also don't have to be around people doing a lot of shopping, worrying about, um, you know, wearing a mask or being exposed to the coronavirus. So 
I'm loving the Walmart pickup. I've been using it regularly for quite a while now. I've had a couple of problems here and there, but for the most part, it's been wonderful. If you guys don't check out my grocery hauls every week, definitely do that. You guys can see kind of how I make this $150 budget work for my family of four. So $150 is what I have budgeted for groceries for the week. Um, for household items, I tend to order my household items right there through the Walmart grocery pickup as well. Um, I keep it as a separate line item because I like to kind of keep track of the spending for household items and get a feel for what I'm truly spending in a month. So moving forward, I think I'm probably going to combine these two again just because it makes sense since I'm purchasing those items at the same time as my groceries. It makes sense just to have one um, line item for it. Let me zoom you guys in a little bit. But um, I budgeted $25 for household this week. I've already done my shopping for the week and I can tell you guys I think I'm way over this $25 for the week but it's sort of okay because the last couple of weeks I haven't spent nearly this full $25 so you know some some weeks you just need more household items than others and I consider household items to be things like cleaning products, toilet paper, paper towels, laundry detergent, anything like that so um yeah, moving forward, starting in November, I'm going to go back to having just one line item for groceries and household again, I think. But for this week, I broke it out. I gave myself $25. You guys can see um, exactly how far over budget I am in this household category next week when I do my budget results video for this paycheck. So definitely come back and check that out next week. All right, next up, I have my lot rent. So... If you're not familiar, my husband and I own our home. It is a mobile home. We own it free and clear. We paid off our mortgage this year. Yay! But we don't own the land. So we rent the lot that our home sits on. It's not an ideal situation. It's not forever, I hope. Um, but it's what's working for us for right now. So we do pay $510 a month to rent the land that our home sits on. Um, also... The first week in November, my cable is due. This is cable TV as well as cable internet. We actually are able to get this package cheaper than it would cost us just for internet. So we don't really use the cable TV too much. Um, my oldest son does occasionally, but for the most part, we really don't use it. But we get high-speed internet, and it's cheaper than just high-speed internet on its own. So... That is our cable package. I budgeted $65 for that. And lastly, we have our water bill. And I budget $50 for that as well. It usually comes in between $40 and $50 for the whole month. And we pay that the first week of November, which is why it is listed here. So when you add up all of these expenses, it comes out to a total of about $800. Not about, it's exactly $800. Um, so that is the bill total for paycheck number four. Next up, we have cash envelopes. So like I mentioned, I do a lot of my spending in cash. This is sort of our weekly spending. These categories are funded pretty much every week. Um, and I use cash for these categories because it keeps me from overspending. It's really easy to keep track of because the cash goes right into my wallet and then when the cash is gone, I can't spend in that category anymore. So um, I really like cash envelopes and definitely something I will probably be using for quite a while, the foreseeable future. I enjoy using cash. When I first started using cash envelopes, I kind of thought that it wasn't going to be for me, that it was going to be a pain, but I actually really like it. So the cash categories that I am focusing on this week are my husband's spending. He's going to get $40 in cash. The way that I do my husband's spending money is I give him the cash at the start of the week. He gets his $40. I don't have any idea what he spends it on. I mean, I have a little bit of an idea, but ultimately I don't care what he spends it on because it's his money. He can do what he wants with it. 
I always say, if he wants to take that $40 and throw it out the window, he can do that, just so long as he doesn't come asking me for more money. And of course, this $40 is something that we agreed upon. Um, you know, I'm not his mom. I'm not giving him an allowance and telling him, don't spend it all in one place. We sat down at the start of our budgeting journey and discussed together kind of what our goals are. Our goals are, you know, to pay down our debt, um, to have savings, et cetera, et cetera. We had a whole long like budget meeting. And one of the things that we decided together was that when it came to spending money, he would get $40 a week. There are some weeks he gets a little bit more if he's going to be working long hours or if he has something specific that he has that he wants. We discuss, but for the most part, he lets me kind of dictate the budget. He's pretty hands off. He just, you know, as long as the bills are paid and he gets his spending money, he doesn't really care if I budget you know, $150 for groceries or $300 for groceries. He's just very hands off that way. So I give him his $40 every single week. So that's that budget. I kind of went on a tangent there. I've gotten questions a lot about things like, you know, how do you get your spouse on board? Um, I really want to budget, but my partner isn't interested in budgeting. What can I do? You really just have to kind of sit down and talk to your partner and decide what your goals are together, decide what you can and can't live with. Um, you know, he could easily take more spending money and spend it, but he's willing to cut back and stick to this $40 because, you know, it's important to him that we pay down our debt too. So talk to your partner, decide what's important to you. Communication, you know, it's important in all aspects of a relationship. Okay, next we have eating out. So you might be thinking, Jesse, why are you putting money into a budget for eating out when you have debt? You talk about Dave Ramsey. You talk about following some of his principles. Dave Ramsey says no eating out while you have debt. Well, quite frankly, I don't care what Dave Ramsey says. I am not going to cut myself down to scorched earth and go without things that I enjoy to pay down debt. Yes, we'd probably pay down debt sooner, but we'd also be miserable and we'd also be more likely to kind of cheat on our debt-free journey. And so I build in money for eating out. I build in money I build in money for doing things that are fun that we enjoy. We still do take vacations, although our idea of a vacation is probably very different than your idea of a vacation. We're not like going on a cruise or, you know, jet setting off here or there. Most of our vacationing is like camping trips, that sort of thing. But it's just important to us that we still enjoy our lives. We don't want to be miserable for the next two years. Um, and that's about how long it's probably going to take us to get out of debt. So... We build in little fun time experiences and stuff just so that we are not miserable. You can do whatever you want. You know, I'm not really giving advice here on my channel. I'm mostly just sharing my journey. That's what works for me. So we do allow ourselves to eat out every single week. And, um, you know, it gives me a break from cooking. It gives us a chance to do something as a family. Most of our eating out is takeout right now. Um, fast food, maybe it's not the healthiest, but it's what's keeping our, you know, mental health in check. So that's what we do. And I budget $40 a week for that. Next up, I have gas. That's gas for my car. We have a Subaru Forester. It is a shared vehicle between my husband and I um, for personal use. He also has a company vehicle that he uses to drive back and forth to work that his company pays gas for. So this is just the gas that we need for our personal vehicle. A budget $40 a week. Anything that does not need to go into my gas tank at the end of the week, anything I have left over, I stick into a little envelope for a future week when I might need more gas. You know, we drive a lot more in the summer than we do in the winter time. So in the winter, 
I probably won't need this full $40 in gas, but I continue to budget that $40 in gas because sometimes in the summer we need $60 in gas, so it all kind of evens out. I just put any extra money from this gas fund aside for future use. But that's $40 that I take out of every paycheck for our gas. And lastly, I have miscellaneous, which is also $40. You can see I like nice round numbers, I guess. Um, I like keeping things consistent. This has been working out really well for us. Miscellaneous is anything else that I didn't think to budget for. Inevitably, something comes up every single week. Or maybe, you know, we go out to eat and we spend a little bit more than this $40 then we can take some money out of this miscellaneous budget to cover it. It's just so acts as sort of a buffer in my budget. I also have a buffer in my checking account for when things totally go off the rails. I'm all about contingency plans and backup plans, as you can see. So $40 for any miscellaneous, extraneous things that come up. I do not, as you can see, have money set aside for myself for spending this week. I did the same last week because I went a little off the rails and went way over my um, personal money spending a couple of weeks ago, um, just doing some shopping. You know, I got a little stir crazy, spent a little bit more money than I should have. And so I've already kind of spent my spending money. <laughs> so another week, starting next week, I'll give myself spending money again. That was sort of my little slap on the wrist. You know, Jesse, don't spend like that again. So no spending money for me this week. Obviously, I made that decision. I'm totally fine with it. So the amount that we're going to take out of the bank for our cash envelopes is $160. Next up, we'll start talking about sinking funds. So sinking funds are different than cash envelopes. Even though I am pulling cash out for my sinking funds, cash envelopes are sort of the things that we spend money on every single week. Sinking funds are more about like saving for the future. So I have about a dozen sinking funds, things that I know that are coming throughout the year that I save up a little bit at a time for so that they're not overwhelming expenses when they come up. I just focus on a couple at a time. So the ones that we are focusing on right now are car maintenance, haircuts, home maintenance, and school expenses. So. We just, you know, take a little bit of money here and there throughout the year, set it aside for these things. Car maintenance, pretty self-explanatory, I think, you know. Your car needs to be maintained. You need an oil change. You need new tires. You need new windshield wipers, whatever it is. So we're going to set $50 aside this week for car maintenance. Haircuts, also pretty self-explanatory. We're going to set $25 aside for haircuts. Um, home maintenance, these are the little home projects that we have, like if we want to paint a wall or if we need to change a furnace filter or, you know, that sort of thing, just things that we need to maintain our home, we're going to set $50 aside for that. And school expenses, these are things like back to school clothes, so school activities, um, that sort of thing, we're going to stick $25 in there for a total of $150 into our sinking funds this week, I always try to aim for at least $150 a week. Not always am I funding these exact funds, sometimes it's different ones, but it's always right around $150 for um, the funds in general. Next we have our debt snowball. I've mentioned several times in this video now, we're on a debt-free journey. We've got credit card debt, you guys. It was a lot more at the start of the year. We have really paid down quite a bit, but we still have a long way to go. And so every week we make some progress on our debt by, you know, throwing a chunk of money at it. So our debt snowball has worked its way up to $150 a week that we are paying towards the kind of lowest card on our list. We list out all of our debts from smallest to greatest, and we just send as much money as humanly possible to that lowest card on the list. When that card is paid off, we take the minimum payment that we were paying towards that card and roll it into this debt snowball and tackle the next one. So right now I think we have five credit cards total. 
So we're paying the minimum payments on four and we're throwing a ton of extra money when we can to that fifth one. That's how it works. It's been working out great for us. We've made a lot of progress this way and we've budgeted $150 to go towards that lowest debt this week, which is a Lowe's credit card um, that we used to buy a washer and dryer. So that's that. Lastly, I have extra savings. This is something that I just started doing again. I want to put a little bit of extra money aside just for whatever, whether it be a rainy day or something fun. I don't really have a specific goal in mind for this money. It's just money that I'm tucking away for the future. So $50 is going to go into our extra savings envelope just for, you know, an occasion when I want to spend some extra money. So that's a look at my budget for the week. Pretty straightforward, pretty simple. Um, that's what's going to happen with our money if all goes well. Definitely make sure that you guys click the subscribe button so you can come back next week and see if I actually stuck to this budget. I always film a budget overview, which is this video, and then I film a cash envelope stuffing video, which you guys will see tomorrow. And then I always, at the end of our week, come back and do a budget results video. So it's the end of our week because we get paid on Tuesday, um, but it's really the beginning of the true week. So you guys will see that on Monday or Tuesday next week, whether or not we stuck to this budget. So. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. Like I said, if you haven't subscribed yet, click that subscribe button. I'd love to have you back. I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.